Now, I know a lot of people don't like the thought of hell. I don't think anybody likes the thought of hell. Somebody on the street says, go to hell. That's not typically a nice reference. It's hard to grapple with just the fact that could there be a hell or is it even real? What does the Bible say about it? Some people say, well, there's no hell. God doesn't believe in those kinds of things. And people who say that are just, you know, judgmental and hypocritical and all these, all these things that people say. Well, in God's word, it makes it very clear um, that there is a heaven and there is a hell. Whether or not we like it doesn't change the fact that that's the way it is. It's the way God has made creation. He's made the world as it is. And, and there's a consequence to the sins that we've done. In fact, Jesus himself, he talks about the end of the age and he says, you know, many will go and at the end of the age, they'll come and they'll claim to have known Jesus, but they won't know him and they won't have served him. They won't have loved him and they will go into eternal separation and eternal judgment. In fact, he says, uh, they'll go to eternal punishment eternal punishment, which is what we call hell. And he says, but the righteous will go to eternal life. Now, I just want you to think about it like this. I think for some people, if you even say there's a hell, I don't even want to have the discussion anymore. But I think there's some inconsistency there, okay? So if somebody did something to my family, if my brother was murdered, right? And all of a sudden, the murder was clear. You know, somebody's found on tape uh, with the murder weapon and they stand before a judge and the judge says, oh, you know, don't worry about it. You know, it's it's okay. Uh, it's all good. You know, I'd be I'd be furious, right? Because in that moment, I want justice for my brother's death, and I want the person who is guilty to be punished. I think the thing that we don't think about with God is we want a God of love, but we don't necessarily embrace the fact that God is also just. The truth is that you and I are the ones who stand guilty before God because of the things that we've done wrong. And let's just be real. If God is perfect and God's holy and God's in heaven, then don't you and I deserve the complete opposite of that because I'm pretty far from perfect. I'm pretty far from holy. If God's in heaven, man, what's the opposite place? That's kind of where I would think I would belong. But for some reason, when we call that hell, it becomes something we rebel against. So you think about hell and this is the place that Again, a God of justice, there has to be a sense of punishment. There has to be a sense of payment for the things that we've done wrong. I mean, this is no different than anything else. If, if you steal, you're gonna get a fine or you're gonna go to jail. If you speed, you're gonna be guilty. Without those kind of laws and structures, there's no order, it's chaos. God is a God of order. He's a God of love. And that's the beautiful thing that yes, God is a God of justice and even there's wrath, but the beautiful thing and the thing I think we need to focus on is that God is a God of love. In that moment when you and I deserve death, when we deserve hell, Jesus came and he went on the cross. He rose, he's alive. And that is where the hope comes because you and I don't have to go to hell, even though we deserve it. God has gone before us and Jesus said, I've gone to prepare a place for you. And if we'll just put our trust in Jesus, we don't even have to think about hell we know that we're gonna be with God forever in heaven. This is what God says.